Hi dancers, welcome back to my channel. I'm Claudia Dean and today I have a really exciting video for you all. I'm going to release the best point shoe hacks and I know you're all going to love them so stay right to the end. I'm going to teach you all the things that I used to do to my point shoes when I was with the Royal Ballet. In today's video I'm going to be using the point shoes that I used to wear which are Block Heritage. I love Block. I used to always wear Block point shoes. I'm a big believer in them. They've got such an amazing range and so many different styles to choose from. I really do know that there's a point shoe for every dancer out there in the block range. Let's get straight onto it. So my first point shoe hack is about making sure that the shank inside the point shoe is actually three quarter shank instead of the full shank. So I'm gonna show you how you create this. I know that this makes the line of foot look so much nicer because occasionally I would find that um, whatever point shoe I wore, it was just because I had really strong toes, I would find that my shoes would break further down in the shoe when actually obviously you always want your foot to break up near the three quarters. In my bag, I've got all the tools we need for today. So for this first hack, you're going to need a good pair of scissors, preferably bigger scissors. You're going to need a Stanley knife to cut the shank. And you're lastly, you're going to need some super glue. I'm gonna demonstrate just using one shoe. Obviously you need to do this to both shoes. Now we're going to pull back, firstly, this gray part of the shoe. So you're gonna pull this back right, probably up until about halfway down the shoe. Can you see the wood here? This is the part we need to make a three quarter shank. So what you're going to do, you're going to push with your fingers, you're gonna push the shank forward so it detaches like that from the shoe. And we're gonna pull it right the way down, again, probably so it's about halfway down to the shoe, there. Now, depending on your foot, so for my foot, I needed to cut the shank about one centimetre away from that nail right there. Okay, so mine is gonna be cut about here. If you find you've got quite a low instep, you might need to go a little bit lower. If you find you've got a quite high instep, you may need to cut even higher. You might need to go two centimetres up. It just depends on your foot. Just a disclaimer, if you are young, please have an adult supervise you doing this or even just get your um, parents to do this for you. Just making sure that you're safe while doing this because we are using sharp utensils here. Now you're going to take the Stanley knife and you're going to place it where you actually want to break the shank. So as I said, mine's one centimetre away from that nail that's in the shoe. Now I'm going to slice really carefully draw a line along that part of the shoe. Just be very careful when you do that. That is just so you know uh, where the shank is gonna be broken. Now I am going to bend that spot where I have just cut. So bend it in, oh, have to use a lot of muscles for that. And then also bend it the other way. You might find in this process, the shank might actually break off. It just depends on your shoe. Now we're going to take the scissors. See where that line is? We're actually going to cut where that line is and cut all the way across. Yeah, and you might actually find two when you get to about halfway, it'll be really easy to break off like that. And there we have it. We have a three quarter shank. Hack number two. Now this next step's really important because I always found that if I didn't do this, I would actually get really bad blisters underneath my feet. Now you're going to get your Stanley knife again and it's best to just basically cut and shave down the corners like so and again on the other side just to make sure that that part doesn't dig into your foot and it's nice and smooth. There we go. Okay, now this is the most important part. Now you're going to get your super glue and you're going to layer it where the wood is and you're also gonna layer it here on the shoe. And basically, guess what? You're going to pull down 
the grey bit and look, it's as good as new and you let it dry. I always used to let it dry overnight, but I'm sure it's super blue, so it's gonna dry really fast. Now it'll be nice and smooth and you'll find you won't get any blisters if you follow all those steps. Hack number three. Now, did you ever find that when you're dancing, perhaps adage on stage, I mean, there's been a lot of roles where I've had to do ponches on stage and Giselle and things like that. Um, and the bottom of your point shoe, it can be sometimes quite unsteady because of the wood, uh, just sort of on the outer edges. So what I like to do is basically shave this section down so that it's really flat and really smooth. And I'm gonna show you how to do this correctly. Take the Stanley knife and all you're going to do, firstly, is start from about the center of the point shoe and shave little bits at a time. So it doesn't need to be big bits, you just shave little bits. Once again, you'll probably make a little bit of a mess. <laughs> so just be prepared to clean that up afterwards. Now, as you can see, if you look from the side view, see how smooth that is compared to this side? So basically, I actually think as well, it gives dancers a much better line on point because it's so seamless here on the side. So let's take the other side now and do exactly the same thing. Okay, and if you want, you can also do this section here, um, just lightly. You don't need to do it as much because you won't feel that as much. There we go. And there we have it. The underneath of the shoe, all done. Hack number four. This one is to reduce the noise. Have you ever watched dancers on stage and sometimes when they land from big jumps, you sort of hear the thud. I mean, that's not ideal when you're in point shoes, but it happens because obviously these are made of wood and they're gonna be loud. But this little hack, it actually reduces the noise from your shoes. I would recommend actually doing this on cement. Today, obviously, I don't have a slab of cement, so I'm just gonna do it on my tuckette. And um, underneath here is chip wood, so it is pretty hard anyway. You're just gonna do this. You're basically gonna take the bottom of your shoe and you're gonna whack it as hard as you can on the floor. P.S. There's about to be some really loud noise. <laughs> like that and I would actually do this probably for about a good 20 seconds on each shoe. I had to do this before every performance at the Royal Ballet. It was a must. In fact, all the dancers in the company had to do this to make sure we sounded like little fairies when we landed from all of our jumps. Hack number five. Now let's go into my bag of tricks and I'm going to get some rosin and also some paper towel. And with the rosin, we're basically going to pour a little bit out, about that much. And then you're going to take your paper towel. And basically, this little hack is to dust your point shoes with rosin instead of calamine. Calamine definitely 100% makes your shoes go funny when it dries. It pulls you back from point. So I'd really recommend you use rosin instead of calamine. And basically I'll show you what to do. All you're going to do is put your paper towel into a little square like this, dab a fair bit on and scoop some up and basically you dust it all over the point shoe. Like so. And ta-da! Look, we've got matte point shoes. And it's amazing because it doesn't change the way they feel on your feet at all. It's exactly the same as, same look as calamine, but it's not calamine. So I'd recommend this. Also, if you're worried about rosin at competitions, because I know some competitions you're not allowed to wear rosin, don't worry, just be really careful you don't get too much on the base of your shoe. Just focus on sort of this outer area and it'll be absolutely fine. Hack number six, we're going to take our Stanley knife again and we are going to basically draw little crosses. There's some here actually already on the shoe, but I do even bigger ones to make it um, really obvious because this hack here will basically make sure that you don't slip at all on stage. 
it is the best thing to grip the underneath of your shoe to studio floors or stage floors. So I'd really recommend you doing this for performances. There we go. And it's really, you'll find it grips so much more when you do this. Hack number seven. Now we're actually gonna remove this top part of the satin here on the shoe. I feel like the material underneath is much more grippy material. We're gonna remove this now. Take your Stanley knife and just do like a little, sort of try and corner it so you grab a bit of the satin. And when you've got a little hole there, you're going to grab your scissors, find the hole that you've torn with the Stanley knife and now you're gonna cut. And you might need to use your hands to lift it up a little bit. And you cut all the way around. And make sure you cut all the way down as well. So we cut all the way down here and then we come all the way back up to finish it off. And we can make it neater by trimming the outside. Perfect. Look. Hack number eight. Now back to my bag of tricks. And we are going to get a little container filled with water spray. We are actually going to spray this section of the shoe here because this part where your bunions are, when obviously your foot's in the shoe, where your bunions are, I feel like it needs to be much softer than any other part of the shoe. So the water will actually make it much softer. So let's do that. And then I just let it dry for maybe 24 hours, but it's water once again, it probably will dry really fast. Back to my bag of tricks and guess what I've got in here? Shellac, of course. Now, shellacking your shoes makes your shoes last so much longer. And the biggest tip with shellac is make sure you put it on when the shoes are brand new. Don't try putting shellac or jet glue on once you've worn them, it just doesn't work. <laughs> Take your shellac and undo it. And what I'd recommend is actually putting the tiniest bit in the top. Like I'm talking hardly anything at all because the last thing you wanna do is to spill this stuff all over your shoes. You're going to take the shellac and basically I would say, it depends on your foot once again, but as I mentioned before, my foot always broke further down. So I used to pour my shellac under this part of the shoe. Oh, it looks like I need some more. Okay, so let's pour some more. <laughs> About that much. So the tiniest bit down the bottom. And look, there we go. A little goes a long way with shellac. There we go. And seriously, that's how much I used to put on. And I used to put it exactly in this spot and it worked perfectly. If you find your feet um, more bendy here, obviously you put it down here. Now, the next place I'd always put shellac was down in this part of the shoe because the box of my shoe used to always break much faster than anywhere else. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. This time, I actually would recommend pouring nearly about a cap filled of shellac into the top. Now, you're going to get the cap and you're gonna pour it down there into the shoe. And you can see it. See how it's kind of like loose at the moment? Now you're gonna swoosh it around so it fills the whole top part of the shoe and al almost make sure there's no um, excess shellac sitting down the bottom. So see how now there's none in there? That's what you want. And this will basically harden up the box part of the shoe and also here, because we put it on the back. Now let it dry definitely for 24 hours, maybe even 48. Hack number 10. Now once you've fully prepared your shoes and you've shellacked them, you've cut them, you've made them three quarter shank, you've done all that to them, I'm gonna teach you a little trick on how to make sure your point shoes don't slip off your heels, because I know this is like a dancer's worst nightmare. So when you put your stockings on, you're going to do this. Now we're going to put our tights on, we're now going to pull this up above there. 
So now, basically your point shoe is going to be sitting here on the heel, so bare skin, which is going to grip so much better than it would with tights. Now we're going to take your shoe and we're going to put it on. And I'm going to show you how to get rid of this gap. Now you're going to grab your excess rosin that you use to dust your shoes and you're actually going to get that and dab it all over this part of your heel. So your tights and the rosin blend. I have also seen dancers do this with white paint and so we used to use that for Swan Lake. So I've seen dancers use all types of things here. So you can use white paint or you can use rosin. There's a few different things. Anything that basically blends in with your tights. So here's the finished shoes, everyone. And I love them. I haven't been on point in so long. It's the weirdest feeling, but this is exactly what I used to do to my shoes. Thanks for watching everyone and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share it with your friends if you loved it as well. Bye for now.